Whatever the situation is, no matter how bad it is, God is always there. We're not alone. Amen? And we're just going to look at a couple of scriptures. I'm not going to keep you too long tonight. We're going to look at seven points, and they're very quick. So pay attention. The first one is, the Israelites running from the Egyptians in Exodus 14. But before we read it, I'm going to explain to you what's going on. The Israelites were running away from the Egyptians. They were running out of Egypt. The Egyptians were known to be the greatest army at this time. Israel didn't even have an army. And Israel's running away from the Egyptians and they get to a dead end. The Red Sea. And I can imagine that the Israelites are afraid because their enemies are coming to them. Their enemies are going to kill them. And look what the Word of God says. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm. And you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So we, here we have the Israelites afraid of their enemies. But one thing the Israelites did have over the Egyptians, they weren't alone. God was with them. And we know the story. God split the Red Sea. The Israelites went through. And their enemies, the Egyptians, died that day. God was with them. They weren't alone. Amen? And then our next point is Joseph. Joseph's brothers were all jealous of him. He had 11 different brothers. And so one day they decided to throw him down a well and to take him out of the well and then sell him to get rid of him. You know who they sold him to? Who eventually he got sold to? The Egyptians. The Israelites' enemies. And that looks like it would be a tough situation. His brothers went against him and now he's living in the town of where his enemies are. But I want to show you what the Word says. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. But look what happened. While Joseph was in Egypt, look what the Word says. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. Even though his own brothers went against him, even though the situation looked like it was getting worse, he got sold to the enemies in Egypt. He was imprisoned. But God turned it around because God was with him and he prospered in everything that he did. Maybe you feel your situation that you're alone. Maybe you feel your situation is getting worse. Maybe your own family or your brothers have hurt you. But I want you to know tonight that God is with you. And God is going to bring you out of it the way he did with Joseph. Amen? Okay, let's continue. Joshua and the walls of Jericho, another famous story. God has promised the Israelites a land flowing of milk and honey. The Israelites haven't seen this promise. Many years have passed, and I can imagine the Israelites want to turn back. I can imagine they believe they'll never get to this promise. So one day, something stood in their way. It was the walls of Jericho and the people of Jericho. The Israelites have to get over this wall in order for them to get to the promise that God has given them. And most scholars believe that Joshua went alone one night. They believe that he went all alone to look at this wall. To see the problem that was ahead. To see the size of this wall. To see how to get in. To look at the gates. To look at Jericho. Look what the Word says. Joshua 5.13 Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked him, Are you for us or for our enemies? It's not up there, but you know what the Bible tells us? The Bible tells us that then the man looked at him and said, Neither, but as the commander of the Lord's army, I have arrived. You know who the commander of the Lord's army is? 
It's Jesus Christ. Joshua was afraid. He couldn't get to the promise because of this wall. And God shows up with him. God shows up when he needed him the most. And look what the Bible tells us. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. If God was not with Joshua, he probably wouldn't have go through that Jericho. But because God was with him, because Jesus showed up in that hard time, they took over the city. Listen, the point of tonight's sermon is this. If God was with these people in their situations, how much more is God with you in your situation? Amen? Let's continue. We just learned about this recently. We've been teaching it on Thursday nights. Jonah running away from God. In that story, we see how Jonah didn't want to hear God's word. And Jonah ran away because he didn't want to preach God's word to his enemies. He didn't want to see their lives change. So the Bible shows us that he ran away as far as he could from God. But I want to show you something. Jonah chapter 1, 3. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Jonah runs away from God. Feels that he's all alone. But even while he's running away from God, God is there. Let me show you what God did. God sent a storm to get his attention. After God sent a storm to get his attention, God sent a large fish to save him. And let me show you what that fish did. Jonah chapter 2, verse 10. And the Lord commanded the fish... And the fish vomited Jonah onto dry land. Well, what does that mean? The place that Jonah was supposed to go to, that's exactly where God had the fish spit him on. What does that mean? You can run away from God, and God is still there. And God is going to try and get your attention the way he did with Jonah so Jonah can turn back. And let me tell you what happened. After God provided a fish and the storm to get his attention, God put Jonah right back on the track where he needed to be. So today, you could run away from God. You could feel you're alone and God is not there where you're at. But I want you to know that God is going to get your attention. He's going to get your attention and He's going to put you back where you need to be. Amen? God is even there when you run away. Let's continue. Daniel in Babylon captivity. The Israelites were in captivity. That means they were, in, they were slaves. And they were slaves for, I think, 70 years with the Babylonians. And this was an impossible situation. You have to imagine, the Israelites, with the one true only God, are now slaves to other people. Where is their God in this? They've lost the blessing of God, they probably felt. Many of them probably thought that God's favor was not there with them. But let me show you something with Daniel. Daniel 1.9 says this, Now God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the commander of the officials. Even though Daniel was enslaved, he was in an impossible situation. The Babylonians were people that they uh, didn't let nothing slide. They were, very, they were just like the Egyptians. They were hard when it came to slavery. But the Bible shows us God was with Daniel even in slavery. God was with Daniel even in an impossible situation. Maybe everyone thought they lost favor. God still gave favor to Daniel. God will give you favor when you're in an, an impossible situation. When you're in a situation that you feel God can't bless you, God can bless you even more. When you're in a hard situation where you feel God is not there, that's where God is. And God will give you favor and bring you out of that situation. Amen? One more. You might not like this one, but it's the truth. Paul in need. Now we're going to the New Testament. 
I want to tell you a little bit about Paul the Apostle. I believe he was shipwrecked three times. That means his boat broke on the ocean and he got stuck there three times. He was beat up multiple times. He was hit with a rod three times, almost to die. He was lashed like you see the way Jesus with the, with the whip. I believe he was hit with the whip five times. Jesus was hit with the whip once. He was hit with it five times. Paul had an up and down life. Can you guys agree with me? He had a very hard time for preaching the gospel. And this one I titled Paul in Need. Philippians 4.12, look what it says. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. What Paul is saying is, I've had my ups and downs. I've had times kainaz khabe and I had times kaisaz khabe. I had times that I was living great and times that I was living very hard times. But I want to show you the next verse. Verse 13. I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. What Paul is saying is this. Physically and financially, whatever situation I've ever been through, I can get through them because God is with me and God gives me strength. So I want to share this with you. Physically or financially, whatever situation you're going through, don't ever think that you're alone in it because God is with you and God is going to give you strength and bring you out of it. Amen? Let's give the Lord a clap offering for that. And then the last one, we close with this. The disciples... Preaching the gospel. When the disciples started to preach the gospel in the book of Acts, they got a lot of opposition. A lot of different people came against them. Uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the high priests, the teachers of law. And they tried to stop them from preaching Christ. People tried to kill them for preaching Christ. But the disciples kept preaching. And look what the Bible says. Acts 11.21 The Lord's hand was with them. And a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. What that means is this. Maybe you're preaching the gospel. Maybe you're telling someone about Jesus Christ and you feel you're alone. Maybe you're telling your family or your friends or even someone on the internet about the Lord and you feel that you're alone and they're not listening. Maybe you know someone that is drinking Someone that's gambling. Someone that's addicted to drugs. And you're trying to preach the gospel to them and you're having a very hard time. I want you to know something. When you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're not alone. You're not alone. Because the Bible says the Lord's hand was with them and people got saved. So my encouragement to you tonight is this. Preach the gospel because God's hand is with you and people's lives will be turned around. So never be afraid to share God's word with anybody because God is even there with you. Amen? So tonight we looked at these seven quick points. No matter the situation, physically, spiritually, financially, enemies, brothers hurting brothers, people losing favor, people in slavery, people in jail, God was with them all. So I want you to think about this tonight when you sleep. Think of your situation. God is with you. You're not alone. Amen? That was the message. God bless you. Okay, church, let's stand before the Lord and let's close.